Okay, so welcome back and on this one we need to talk about controllers, output and polyphony. So this is the video number four, I guess, of the series. So if you didn't watch the other ones, you will need to watch them. You're going to be a little bit lost then. So I'm going to go to default and start right from the scratch, not, not another one, to default. And I'm going to go and disable the this one. So now we're going to talk about the tune, the glide and these options that we get right here. You know, this one's right here and things are, uh, are just about to get a little bit weird. So, OK, so first of all, if I play something. The tune is just the tune. I feel like I don't need to explain a lot more. A lot right here is going to tune. It's a global tune. And if you have three oscillators playing, this one will go three semitones up or three semitones down. Pretty simple, right? Just the tune. Then you have the glide control. Now, if you don't know what the glide is, is that the glide, uh, whenever you press a key, the sound will glide to that note. And maybe just saying this, it's just not going to make it better. So I'm going to go and go to the glide and provide, you know, the maximum amount of uh, we could get so I can show you how this works. So I'm going to go right here at the bottom and notice it says glide on and glide off. So if I press a key, nothing happens, right? I'm just pressing different keys and nothing happens. Now, if I turn the glide on, I'm going to press a key and notice there is kind of a glide. OK, so let me just do it again. I'm going to go and press another key. And notice the note, it's gliding to the next one. So that's what glide is. I'm going to press this. And you know what? Let me just, just add a little bit of kind of frequency because it's just too bright. I'm going to press this key It's gliding. I'm going to press this one and it's gliding again. And of course, this one, it's going to be, uh, you know, how aggressive or how long this glide is going to be. So I'm going to press there and it takes a long time to get there. Now I'm going to press maybe an octave uh, higher. Why not? And notice it's going to move to that note and it will take a long time to get there. So of course, this depends on how aggressive this glide is. If I do this, it's very short, right? OK, so this one works in conjunction with the play mode that you have right here. And this is the play mode. It's very important. And this is something that you get with uh, pretty much uh, all the uh, uh, Arturia plugins. So the play mode is how the notes are going to be played when you use the glide and you use the legato, maybe. So I'm going to go and right here on this plugin, you get high, you get low, you get high and you get last. So I'm going to go to low first because it's pretty simple. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to maybe here. I'm going to press a key, right? And of course, we, we get that. So if uh, if it's just low, it means that the glide will only work if I press a key that it's lower than the key I'm pressing and we get a glide. Now, if I press this key and I press a, a key higher than the key I'm pressing, nothing is going to be played. And this is not just for the glide control is how this works. I press this and if I keep pressing and press different keys, it's not going to work. Only the lower ones will work. So that's why you need to always double check the play mode, because if you are doing a little bit of glide and you are playing a higher note, it's just not going to work. So then, of course, you get the opposite of this. You can get a lower note, you know, just a fundamental note. And then the only ones that will play are the higher notes, but the lower notes are not going to work. Right. And then you get the other one, which is the most common uh, mode, which is the last. So this means that every you know note you play is going to work. It doesn't matter if it's low or high or high. And if you're using a glide, it will just glide to that next note. OK, so then you have the uh, I'm going to disable for now the glide and go all the way down. So then you get the legato. Now, this is a little bit weird. Notice it says legato. And then if you click it, it's going to go to the middle position. And then if you click it again, it goes to a third position. And it's very hard to see. It's a very hard thing to see. So if I go to the first one, let me get there first. Uh, it means that it's off. So I press something, just nothing happens. I'm going to go and enable the filter modulation so I can show you how this works. Maybe a little bit of attack time. And something like that, maybe go here. Notice that we can hear the sweep of the filter. And now again, the previous section was about filter. So you should know what I'm doing right now. So we are just doing a little bit of filter. 
So the, with the legato of, uh, nothing happens, all right? So the trick is that with legato, if I turn it on and I'm doing a filtering, every time I press a key and I release, I'm getting that sweep, all right? I'm getting the filter sweep. And that's cool. That's how, how it should work. Right. Now, the, the, the thing that, uh, how legato works is that if I press a key and I keep pressing the key, if I press new keys, it will not, of course, do this uh, sweep. It will, you know, the filter is just not going. It's just playing the next note. And that's what, you know, legato does. Now, of course, if I play single notes, we get the sweep, but not for the other ones, if I press a key. And always, of course, take a look at the uh, keyboard right here at the bottom. So this is what the, the legato is gonna do. Now I'm gonna go and show you how the legato third option work. And notice I'm, I'm using the glide control and I'm going all the way up on the glide, right? And remember, we are still using the filter. So uh, the glide is on and the third position on the legato, it's on. So I'm gonna go back to legato off and I'm gonna show you how this works because it's a little bit weird. So when legato is on and off, in this case, I press a key and we glide. I press a different key and we glide, right? And it doesn't matter if we keep pressing hold, every time we press a new key, it's just gliding to the next one. Of course, it's taking maybe too much, but it's just doing the glide, right? Okay. And this is because the, by using the last, the, uh, the synth will remember what was the last key played. So if I press a key and release it, and I press a different key, it will glide from that note to this note. That's, you know, again, how it works. Now, what, you know, how is this gonna work with legato? So if I go right here and play a different note, it's just gliding, which is okay. And I keep pressing. If I press a key, it's gliding. And if I press a different key, it's gliding as well, right? With legato on or, you know, at the middle position. I release a key and press and, and you know, it, we get this glide. And even if we press and hold, we're still getting the glide. So now if I go to the third position, I'm gonna press it, I press the key, and notice it's not gliding. I'm gonna release it, I'm gonna go press a different key, and it's not gliding, right? I'm gonna press a new key, and I'm gonna make the glide longer, so uh, make it a little bit obvious. I press a key, not gliding. So it is not remembering that it needs to glide from the from the previous note. But if I press and hold the key and I do the legato, it's doing the glide. So all of this is just a combination. If you go to the documentation, the manual of Arturia is very vague about all of this. <laughs> they don't give you a lot of information. So this is something that you just need to try out and, and see how it works. Okay, so let's you know move on to a different thing because this is nice you know having the glide which is something that we use sometimes of course it's very important but maybe the other options the legato and the decay are not not so important not something that you're going to really use the whole time you can of course go to the manual and check them out but i, want, I really want to talk about this one the the controls we have right here the uh, unison the voice detune the polyphonic because this is very important so by default the mini mock the this one in this case mini v is monophonic it's just a monophonic synthesizer it's not polyphonic so of course, this is a recreation, a virtual recreation of that. So we can use polyphonic. We can use it, you know, play many keys at the same time. But by default, it's monophonic. So I can only play one key at the same time. And you know what, let me just go back to default. So I'm gonna go there, default, and just disable the, this one, okay. So I press a key, we get a sound. If I press a new key, and let me do a little bit of filtering so it's not that annoying. I press a new key. Notice this one is not playing anymore. It's just playing the next one because the play mode is last, but you can only press one key at the same time. It's a monophonic synthesizer. So, okay. So how can we make it polyphonic? Right here, you get the option, polyphonic. So now instead just, you know, of playing one chord at the same time, we can do a chord. Right, so many keys at the same time. And by default, you get up to 32 voices. So you can play 32 keys at the same time, and each one will use one single voice. So again, we just get a polyphonic. So that's, uh, you know, how you enable this. 
So then you get the volume, of course, we know that. Now, then you get the unison. So if you don't know what unison is, it's pretty much a way of uh, monophonic. So if I enable unison and uh, disable polyphonic in this case, I can press a chord and it's not going to sound. Well, we, we are not going to get a chord. We know we, we just get a single sound. So I'm going to lower the volume just a little bit. Let me maybe go here. Okay. So I'm going to enable unison and I'm going to make a chord. Notice that we are not getting a chord. You're just getting a single note. But that this note it sounds very strong. And if I play a chord, it sounds louder. So what it does, if you know what unison is, is that whenever you have a, a synthesizer that has multiple voices, like in this case, we have 32, uh, we can use the remaining voices of every single key we press to stack the voices. Oh, I almost just dropped the coffee. So uh, you can stack the, these voices on top of each other. That's why if I disable this, you know, we hear this. And when I enable, we hear that there's kind of a, a phasing sound, you know, there's uh, it's louder, of course, but there's a phasing sound, it such, 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 sounds much stronger. And this is because the synthesizer behind the scenes is stacking the voices that you're using right here, which are 16, which is a lot, to the same frequency, the same pitch uh, that you are playing, which is a single key. So now you're playing 16 voices on top of each other on the same key. Of course, you can go right here and select three voices and that will sound much, you know, just a little bit different. Now, the main concept is that when you play a single source, you know, a sound, and it's the exact same sound and you uh, just play it from different sources, This uh, I'm talking about the same sound, you don't get a better sound, you just get more volume because it's the same sound, all right? So, right now what we are doing is that we are just playing the same key six voices on top of each other so we don't get a lot of a difference now of course this is an analog synthesizer so all the different voices that they've modeled they have you know they are just a little bit different but this you know it's still an emulation it's still a plugging but they are a little bit different so when we play it we hear that there's something going on we get more volume because their voices are you know being stacked on, on top of each other and there is kind of a facing going on because all the different voices they have a little bit of detune they are a little bit different that's why we just don't get more volume and we hear something different we are not getting this we get a much fuller uh, fuller and richer sound richer much rich so of course what happens if we start to detune all the different voices right we have 16 right now if i play a note i want to do something and detune these voices a little bit more so what are you gonna get we're gonna get a, a, a just a bigger sound and this is the voice detune i'm playing a key we are doing 16 voices on top of each other and as soon as we start detuning them we get a massive sound. And let me just go down in volume because maybe it's too loud. I'm gonna play a sound. It's very dull because all the voices are in the same place. And as soon as we start detuning, it goes really big. Okay, so now we know how unison works and that we can detune the remaining voices uh, to get a bigger sound. What happens with polyphonic? So, well, since we are using polyphonic, we cannot do unison, but you can still uh, use the voices that you get to detune them. So, for example, I'm going to go and play something. I'm playing a chord. Of course, we are in mono. I'm going to make it polyphonic. So, we're going to get, let's say I play uh, three notes. We get we get it. If I just play this, the, maybe the same chord, I'm going to detune the voices. And the voices are just being detuned just a little bit. We don't get the same effect we get with this because this is just massive when we do unison. And I need to disable pol polyphonic. It's just different, just you know, different way, different way, ways of doing of generating different sounds. You get the unison, you can detune the voices, or you get the polyphonic mode. And notice that when you go uh, unison, when you enable unison, that's when you get the option to 
uh, change the uh, amount of voices that you can use. Now, sometimes when you do when you do unison, which is a really great sound, uh, maybe you don't want to do 16 voices. Maybe it's too much. We usually do five or you know six voices. That's 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 enough. Now, always remember that as you go up in the number of voices that you use on the synth, uh, the consumption of <laughs> of the uh, of the synth. Uh, it's just going to grow. It's just going to use much more resources, right? So maybe five sometimes. And notice how, how crazy it's going. It's we are using 6%. If I go to 32, it goes to 33% of usage. Of just consuming a lot of memory. So always remember that. Because sometimes you just need five. You don't, you don't need 32 to get a good sound. All right, so that's it pretty much with the unison, the detune, and the polyphonic. The only thing left that you get, oh, and notice that if I, if I disable unison, uh, you don't get the voices, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, the last thing that you get is the this one. And this is just a nice touch that they you know gave us um, for this plugging. This is a, a tuner. So yeah, of course, back in the day, uh, since this was this is analog back in the day, and now if of course if you can get one of this one, uh, one of uh, the minimog, the real minimog, uh, they are analog, and they the the voices will detune, uh, you know naturally. Now of course this is a recreation and it's a it's a plugging, so the voices are always good, so we they are not going out of tune. But back in the day, the original unit gave you a reference tone, so when you play an, when you play a sound. You can just tune it up or just tune it, you know, to whatever the pitch is, which is 440. Because remember, they will go out of tune. That's why you get the, the reference tone. Now, of course, uh, right now, we just don't need it as much because this is, of course, virtual. But, you know, it's just, just nice, a nice thing to have. So you can also, and I'm going to go and go to this view, uh, to, big, the, to the big wick. Bitwick, sometimes it's kind of a tongue twister, the Bitwick uh, view, you can click right here on this one and notice that you get right here the settings, you can change the MIDI channel, but you also can change the play mode from here and the polyphony from here. So yeah, so even though you're not getting getting it right here at the bottom, you can access still access from here. And it's because they know when you use Unison, probably you want to mess with the voices. That's why they give you this option when you enable it. Once it's disabled, it's already polyphonic if you do this, of course. Now, but if you're not using unison and you still want to use mono, yeah, well, you can you can change the voices. It doesn't matter. It's still mono. Then, of course, you get all, all the options right here. Maybe we're going to talk about them on a different section. But but this is it. We just covered the tune, the glide, this one, and uh, the, all the voices, which is, you know, the different sounds and different modes that we get within the same uh, synthesizer. All right, so let's go. Uh, let's go to the next video. Remember, this is a series, and on the next one, we are going to talk about something very important. Uh, we are going to talk about the options that we get right here, like the modulation and the effects.